Hi okay, guys, today we're going to talk about um, arrays and input. Arrays as uh, a series of things and input as a way to display this series of things. So let's say we want to have a collection of objects. How can we display one object one after the other and then keep on going around the list that we've created? To do that, we're going to do multiple things. First, we're going to see how we can deal with imported 3D models. Um, as you might have seen or might have uh, realized, when you import a 3D model, the scale is different than the scale of other objects. Its position is different, its rotation is different. And we'll see how we can use parenting to deal with 3D models. Um, once we have the set up our 3D models, we're going to put them in an array. So as a series of objects, and we're going to see how, by clicking around on the mouse, we can go through each of these arrays, um, each of these elements in the array. And because uh, clicking around on the mouse is only possible on a computer, and because we're developing for mobile, we're going to see in the end how do we deal with different touch inputs, whether it's a, it's a mouse click or a touch input. So we're going to start with our Unity project, which I have here. We have our central scene, we have our camera, our directional light, and at the bottom here, I imported five different um, objects that I downloaded from Sketchfab. So let's look at one of the basics. When you download an object from Sketchfabs, in general for 3D models, you have sor um, source files and textures. Source is going to be the mesh itself. Um, so I'm going to double click on it. It's going to uh, unzip the mesh model. And if I go back to Unity, it's going to reload. And it's going to show us the object that we just unzipped. You'll note that the format is OBJ. Uh, which is one of the formats that Unity accepts. And I'm going to go and drag this model here. So now that we have the mesh, the thing that we're missing is um, the textures. As I look around, it looks huge and it looks very, very black. So we need to find the texture for this model. Surprisingly, this texture is in the folder, in the folder called textures. And what we have is a texture. What we need, along with our texture, is a way to put that texture onto the mesh. And for that, we need the material. So I'm going to do right click, create material, and I'm going to call it um, I'm going to call it Mars material because this is a mesh of the surface of Mars. Once I have this material, I'm going to drag the texture onto the square at the top of my material on the right, the albedo texture. And now I have, I've have assigned this texture to this material. And finally, I will assign the material to the model by dragging the material onto the model itself. Which should work. Yep, now that we've uh, rotated the um, the model, we can see that the texture is uh, correctly applied, and we see our um, our surface of Mars. Cool. Let's go to the second one. Let's go back to our models. Let's go to Mount Rushmore. Again, we have the source. We're going to unzip Rushmore. Go back to Unity. And this time, we have another kind of 3D model. We have an FBX. Again, I drag and drop much more here. And FBX has texture information already put. Um, and so you see that our texture is already here. And here is our first setup. Right? So we have two, two objects. And the idea is that we want them to coexist in the same space. Right? So we need them to be the, the same size and the same position. Let's check where our camera is by uh, clicking on main camera. And we can see an over, uh, a preview of our, cam of our camera. We're going to move our objects around so that we can see them a little better. The Mars one, I'm going to go ahead first and rename it Mars. And then I'm going to click on the Move tool here. I'm going to move it around. I'm going to click on the Rotate tool. I'm going to rotate it so that it goes in the other place. I'm going to click on the Move tool, move it again. And usually what's helpful in this case is to put the game view and the scene view in separate panels. So I'm going to drag the game view on the side. 
now I can see both at the same time. That's going to be pretty useful. Um, and so I can see from the camera, maybe we put it below, actually. Yeah. This is what I can see from the camera. So I can see that, okay, Mars is pretty well done. Um, I want to change Rushmore so that it faces around me. So I'm going to click on the Rotate tool. And I'm going to rotate right here. Click on the Move tool and make it come closer. Okay, so I have a rough idea of um, of how big are our um, 3D models. And it seems to be okay. It seems to be like surface of Mars somewhat at the same scale as the Mount one. So I'm going to continue with the other ones. I'm going to go to uh, the Kermes Mill. Unzip it. Um, this time it's also an OBJ. So you see we have our textures already. Once it's done uh, importing, we're going to be able to drag it and see if um, if our mill is at the same scale of our other objects. Okay, put this here. Oops, no, that's the game view, so I can't drag it into the game view. I have to drag it into the scene view. And Put the game right here. Okay. And now we need to find our mail. And it looks like, yeah, if you see it here, that's our first problem. There's where my mouse is, there's a little like blue overlay, which is where the mill is. So I'm gonna set it back to zero, zero, zero. So this should currently be at zero, 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 but it looks like it is, um, is it upside down? Yes, it is upside down also. So we need to rotate it. Oops. By 180 degrees, I'm gonna put this here, and put the rest at zero, zero. Yep. And I'm going to rotate it this way. Well, so here you see our first problem. I rotate something, but it doesn't rotate around the mill itself. So basically, our issue is that we need to create a parent element, a parent object, in order to allow us to rotate and move the element as if the center of the rotation was actually at the center of the object, which is not the case here. For multiple reasons, like the way that the 0, zero was set up in the, in the 3D software, that the person used to create a 3D model maybe wasn't the same as the 000, the origin that we use in Unity. And so we need to account for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another object, parent object, that's going to be on the other. We're going to say create empty. And I'm going to call this the mail. And inside this empty, I'm going to create a 3D object, a cube. Why do I create a cube? Just to know where the center of the object is, because the cube is at 0, 0, 0, 0, and so we're going to know that the object is right there, right now. This is the 0, 0, 0. And so now I want to put QZMZ inside the mill so that when I rotate the mill itself, then it rotates around the zero, zero of the parent object. It rotates around, precisely around the cube. So now I can just remove the cube itself, deactivate it. I can move the mill to zero, right now it's minus one, zero, now it's 1.6, and then the Z component is 1,200. So I move this, and our mill is going to join all of our other objects which are around the zero, zero, zero. I'm going to put it here. 
click on the game view to check. It looks like, okay, three objects are the same. Same scale, same position. Easy to manipulate. Let's do one more. This is a sculpture of uh, Salambo. I unzip it, I reopen Unity, I go back to Unity, it's going to re import those objects. And I open the um, LBJ file, I drag it into the scene. And yep, yeah, same problem with Salambo. The default orientation is not the one we want. Right. Um, so I'm going to create a empty object. I'm going to call it Salambo. And oops, I'm going to put it here so that it's not a child of the mill. Salambo has an origin of 000. And now I'm going to put this Salambo inside this one. So now when I move this guy which has a, has a default position and rotation, I will be able to move Salambo similarly. But what I want right now, actually, is to move the rotation of the, the inside child. Because if I change the rotation, if I go to minus 90, then I have Salambo in the correct direction, but it's not at the center, right? If I create that cube again, show me where the center is, this is the center of the statue. It's going to give me a lot of troubles um, for moving it around if there's an offset between the center of my parent object and the child object. So I'm going to move Salambo a little bit around. I'm going to set it to 0, 0, 0. It's still a little bit higher than the cube. Right? So I'm going to bring it down manually. I'm going to click on the Move tool. I'm going to go down. And now the bottom of Salambo is at the bottom of the cube. And I can deactivate that cube again. And then finally, if we look at the scale of it, Salambo is still huge, right? They're all more or less in the same location. Salambo has a huge, huge um, scale. So the point is that we want all of our top level objects, so Rushmore, Mars, Salambo, Mill, to all have a scale of 1, 1, 1, right? And then here, 1, 1, 1, here, 1, 1, 1, and here, well, this one is 100, 100, 100. It's not good. So if I say 1, 1, 1, this is how small it is. So we're going to put it back to 100, 100, 100. And again, we're going to put it inside an empty object called um, Rushmore. I'm going to put it at I'm going to put run much more inside, set now much more to 0, 0, 0. So now it's actually the same 0, 0 as our um, parent object. And I'm going to move it a little bit back to where it was. Cool. So now we have run much more that has a scale of 1. And actually, Salambo is a, yeah, a little bit big. Let's try and make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go inside Salambo. And this guy, I'm going to put at 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And I'm going to move back this one. Cool. So I look at my game, and now we have an interesting collection of different cultural artifacts made out of stone, right? Um, portraits of the US presidents, um, old milling, um, mill technologies, from um, Central America, and um, paintings of Greek myths, um, paintings and sculptures of Greek myths, and finally um, foreign, uh, foreign land represented today as um, the surface of Mars. So we have all these trees. Now that we've um, changed their position, their rotation, to make it easy to work with, what we're going to do is that we're going to save them as prefabs. I'm going to create, go to my assets, create a new folder, Go to folder, call it prefabs. Da -da -da. 
doesn't work. New folder, call it prefabs. And we're going to drag all these guys into the prefabs. Yes, no, that's the one. Okay, much more. Mill, Sambo, and Mars. And I want to create, because Mars is already a prefab, because we imported it directly, we didn't have to touch it though, so much. Um, I'm going to create a prefab variant. So all of those are now nice prefabs, and I'm going to delete them here. So this was the first part. The first part was to be able to like import 3D objects, map um, textures to materials if necessary, change their scale, change their rotation, so that we can work with them easily. Now the second step is going to be to uh, display them one after the other in um, whenever we click. And so to do that, we're going to need to deal with arrays. And arrays are basically lists of things. Um, let's see how it works in practice. I'm going to create an empty object that I'm going to call like script or app manager. And the job of that object is going to have one script, which is going to be like the, let's call it like list manager for now. The list manager, it's going to have a list of objects. And every time I click, it's going to create one object um, randomly in the, in, on the screen. So I double click on this. And the first thing that I need is going to be a list of game objects. And so we've seen that we can just declare a game object by saying the, the type of the variable we want by just saying game object and giving it a name like object to appear. When we want to have um, an easy way to give a value to object to appear, remember that we make it public. So we put the public keyword in front and once I go back to Unity, Unity is going to reload and going to show me the, va the variables I can um, assign here. And I see object to appear, and right now there's nothing, there's no game object. But we don't want just one game object, right? We want, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, we want four of them. So we're going to go back to our script and we're going to modify it so that we don't only have one object, we have a list of them. And after the type of object, or the type of uh, data that I want, we're going to put square brackets, opening and closing. And those square brackets always represent lists. It's a list of things, one, two, three, four, five, blue, red, green, yellow, so on and so forth. And to represent that now it's a list, it's, it's, a, it's a multitude of things, I'm gonna add an S here to say objects to appear. I go back to Unity. And inside my app manager, now I have a menu and I can say, there's a list of objects that can appear. And I want the size to be four, I press enter, and now I can put all of the elements. So the element zero of the list is gonna be Mars, element one is going to be the mill, element two is going to be Mount Rushmore, and element three is going to be Salambo. So we have four elements, but we always start counting at zero, so we have zero, one, two, three. Cool. Now, whenever I click, I want to create one of those objects. So I'm going to say if I click, which in Unity is written if input get mouse button down, convoluted way of saying click, which mouse button do we want, left one or right one? The left one, the default one is going to be zero, the right one is going to be one. If there is a click, what do we do? We want to create, to instantiate one object. So we're going to say instantiate, and then this is going to be where we put the object. And we're going to say instantiate it at a position it's at 0, 0, 0 with an identical rotation, quaternion dot identity. So we don't have to worry about the, the rotation. What do we instantiate? The question is how do we access only one object from one list? The way we do that is by giving it the number of the element. So if I wanted to access um, the mill, I would say instantiate element 1. If I wanted to access uh, Salambo, I would say instantiate element 3. If I wanted Mount Rushmore, I would do element 2. So, if we were to instantiate Salambo, this is how we would write it. We would say, from the list 
objects to appear. Give me number three and create it at 0, 0, 0 at identity. And actually, we're going to make it a little bit more interesting. Instead of saying create exactly at 0, we're going to give it a little bit of randomness or variation on the x-axis. So we're going to say random dot range. So give me a random number between the range of, let's say, minus 5 and 5, just so that we have a little bit of um, variety. I'm going to go back to Unity. Um, Ah, and it's not vector, it's vector 3. I forgot. Because it's a 3 component, x, y, and z. And I'm going to click play. And so now whenever I click, one statue appears, another statue appears, a little bit random, more randomized, and so on. I can create a bunch like this. Great. Stop playing, all the objects are gone. So we can create objects just by clicking. That's great. But how do we make sure that we cycle through all the different objects? I want to create Mars, and then the mill, and then Mount Rushmore, and then Salambo, so that the users of our app can create sort of a connection and, and a common story between the, the similar material um, that all of these objects are made of, namely stone. To do that, we basically need to change this number 3 here, right? Because if we have number 0, and we press play, then we're only going to create um, element zero, which is the Mars. Whoa, which is a little bit too high for us, actually. And if we were to put the Mars variant a little bit more down, then we would be able to see a little bit better. Cool. Maybe actually, you know what? Let's create Mars and let's position the camera so that we can see Mars probably properly. Once it's here, my camera is actually there. So there's two position, two possibilities. Either I rotate the camera and then I move it to see Mars like this, but that's going to mess me up when I'm going to try to create Salambo. Salambo is going to be facing back, Rushmore is going to be facing back. So what do we do? We're going to modify the Mars variant so that um, it has the correct um, rotation. So it's actually rotated 180 degrees. So let's fix this right now. To do that, we're going to go to the Mars variant. We're going to open the prefab. We're going to modify our prefab. And now we're in a mode where we only work on the prefab itself. So to do that, we're going to go inside the child object and we're going to give it a rotation on the y-axis of 180 degrees. And if the center of the Mars variant is going to be about here, we need to move this part a little bit, the child object. I'm going to move it here so that the center of the Mars variant is now at the center of our object. Actually, I should change. I should make sure always that the parent object has a rotation of 0 and a scale of 1, because this is what we want. And now that I'm in here, let's check one more time how it works. I click. Oh, OK. And Mars is correctly oriented. Perfect. So back to our issue of displaying different objects. Basically. We want to be able to say, give me object 0, and then give me object 1, and then give me object 2, and then give me object 3. So if it's a number that changes, we need a variable. To do that, we're going to declare a new variable here, and we just want a number that goes between 0 and 4. I'm going to say int, and we're going to call it like object counter. An object counter, if we want to create the first object, is going to start with a value of 0. So first, we create object. Um, we create the element 0, and then the element 1, then the element 2, and so on. And I'm going to replace the 0 that I have here by object counter. But if I click once, it's going to create object counter number 0. And if I click twice, it's still going to create object counter 0. So now we need to make it dynamic. We need to increase its value every time. We're going to say object counter plus plus. And plus plus is a shortcut for saying increase by one. So it means create, create an object 
from the element 0, and then increase the counter. The counter becomes 1. Create the object element 1, which is going to be um, the mill, I think. Let's see. And then, yep, yeah, it's going to be the mill, and then it's going to increase. It's going to be element 2, and then rush more, increase, and then 3, so and so on. So let's see how this looks. First is Mars, second is the mill, third is Mount Rushmore, and fourth is Salambo, which we cannot see, but let's see, ah, she's hidden. Yeah, she's right there. Yeah. And now if I press one more time, then I get a crash. There's a, um, an error in my console saying list index out of range, outside the bounds of the array. The bounds of the array means that we only have four elements, so it's between zero and three. But then we keep on increasing, we keep on increasing, and at some point, object counter reaches four, and so we say, hey, give us element number four of the objects to appear, and then Unity says, well, we only have uh, the maximum one is element three, so I can't give you that. So what we need to check is if object counter is bigger than our list, then we reset it to zero. So if object counter is greater or equal than the length of our list, so how many elements we have in our list, objects to appear dot length. And if that's the case, go back to zero. Object counter equals zero. And because we're so close to the camera, we're actually going to make all these objects appear a little bit further. So we're going to say the Z component of where we make it appear. It's going to be at, let's see, is it 10? Is it minus 10? No, oh, let's bring it. The camera is at minus 10, so we want to move away from the camera. So we're going to say 10. Or even 20. Let's be crazy. And then the random range is going to be between minus 25 and 25. So now we're going to play again, and I click once, I see Mars, I click twice, I see the mill, which is actually also with the wrong rotation, I click again, I see Mount Rushmore, and then I see Salambo, and then I click again and I see Mars again, and then I see the mill again, and then I see Mount Rushmore again. And we could do it forever, and it's always going to um, cycle around. Let's clean up a little bit our 3D models. Um, let's say that we'd actually want to have um, Salambo as the default size. It seems like it's the one that's the most manageable. So, if at the position of 0, 0, 0, this is the size of Salambo, let's see what is the position of Mount Rushmore compared to it. Put it at 0, 0, 0. This is huge, right? So we need to scale down that much more. I'm going to say, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to click on the scale tool here on the top left. I'm going to scroll, scale down everything so that it's yeah more manageable and looks like more of a size of uh, so on. And because I've modified these values, I'm going to go to my much more, and then I'm going to say override, apply all the changes to any prefab. Cool. So now we've dealt with Mount Rushmore. We can delete it. Let's see the mill. Let's put the mill at 0, 0, 0. Looks like it is um, a similar position. The problem, as we see, is that the rotation here is minus 87. We want to have a rotation always of 0. So let's put this at 0. We see that it flips, and inside, we're going to go to our original 3D model, and we're going to put this at minus 90. Whoa, where did it go? <laughs> wow, it's super far away, because Z is at minus 1000. Let's put this back at zero. Double click on objects so we can zoom. That mill is really annoying. Um, so if this is, the mill is way up, so we need to bring it all the way down, 
give it a value of minus 200, maybe. No, minus 2,000. Might be too much. Let's do minus 1,000. If we zoom on the mill, still very far away from Salambo. So let's bring this down even more. Minus 1,200. We're getting closer, it looks like. Minus 1,500. Let's zoom to Salambo, see how far we are. Ah, we're below now. I'm going to bring it back up a little bit. Let's do 1,300. Yeah, 200. Nope, now we're too far. 1,200. Yeah, we're getting there. Yes, nice. Almost there. Let's move it a little bit further up. And now, again, they look like they belong in the same plane. And we do all this work, again, so that we have all these values that have changed. Z equals 180, X minus 90, Y minus 1,200. And then inside the parent object, mil has the same values as Salambo. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And that's going to make it so much easier for us to be able to move our objects afterwards. So we don't forget to save our changes. We go to overrides, apply all. Now we can delete the mil. And last one is going to be the Mars variant. And so the Mars variant, we're going to put it at 0, 0, 0. It's quite huge. Maybe we should make it a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to click on the scale tool again, go to default, and scale it down, scale it down, scale it down. And then if the Mars variant if the center is at Salambo, I want to move the default so that it's actually the same center. So I'm going to move it. And now we're roughly at the center of Salambo. Again, now those two objects have um, uh, are more coherent in, in their scale and rotation. I apply it. And then I delete it. Salambo similarly overrides. No changes were made. I don't need to change anything. And I'm going to delete it. Let's play it again. And now I click, I see Mars, I see the mill, I see Mount Rushmore, and I see Salambo. So we could modify the code a little bit to make it appear um, uh, in more spaced ways, but the point is that we would want to have our um, users tap on our app, and um, whenever they hit a surface in their, in their augmented reality app, they create one of these objects, wherever they are. And so they would naturally do the spacing, right? So let's look at the last part of this tutorial, which is um, dealing with different kinds of, um, of input. And this is in a script, which is in the wrong folder. Let's put it back in assets. Scripts called Interaction Manager, which is similar to the Interaction Manager we had in the last video but a little bit more elaborate in, with, in, in the sense that it has um, it has two uh, functions to handle input. So in our list manager, we only have an update, a bunch of instructions to say create a new object, increase the counter, check that the counter isn't too much. Here in interaction manager, because we have two inputs, I separated each of the input inside the handle touch input and handle mouse input. So that every, at every update we check, do we have a touch, are we on the touch platform, or do we have a mouse, are we on a mouse platform? So what is happening in handle mouse input? I could put everything that I put inside the update of the last manager. So I'm gonna copy and paste all of this. I'm gonna have to do a couple of adjustments because the variable names are exactly the same. For instance, in the Interaction Manager script, the object counter is actually called current object. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to put it here, and here, and here, and here. And then in the handle touch input, I have another function which deals with um, augmented reality. Right? So we check, do we even have touches or not? If we don't have anything, then we quit, them, we quit the function. If we have a touch, then we store the position. Then we use the um, AR raycast 
to um, check where we've touched it, what kind of surface we've touched. Then we select the object that we want to appear now. And you see how this syntax is similar. Objects to appear, square bracket, current object is the same one we use here. Objects to appear, square bracket, current object. Then we use the specific function make content appear at, which is given to us by the AR foundation. And then we do the same thing, increase the current object and then make sure it doesn't um, go over the bounds of the, of the list of the array. So this is a script that you will use to both test it when you have a mouse on your Unity um, the editor on the desktop, and the same script is going to have the same logic so that when you export it to your phone, it's going to switch to the touch input, um, and it's going to make the objects appear every time that the user has detected a plane, and every time that they tap somewhere on the plane. And so that concludes today's tutorial about um, arrays and input. First, we've seen how do we deal with imported 3D models. And that happens through parenting, changing the position, the scale, and the rotation, so that they are all consistent. Right? The goal that we saw is that all the prefabs that we created all had a position of 0, 0, 0, a scale of 1, 1, 1, 1, and a rotation of 0, 0, 0. Once we've did that, we've looked at arrays as a series of objects. Now how can we create a new array by saying public and then our type and then square brackets and then the name of our array, the name of array. And then we access each of the elements by saying the name of array and then square brackets and then a number inside, which could be zero or which could be a variable. And finally, in order to deal with the two platforms we're developing on both the laptop and um, the mobile phone, we see that we can separate our logic, the whole part where we do um, instantiate, get mouse button down, into uh, two different functions. One that says handle the touch input inside the update, and one that says handle the mouse input. And Unity will check, okay, do I have a mouse? Then I execute this. Do I have a touch that I execute the other function. And that's all.